Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about the single responsibility principle. Now this is the first of the solid principles and I think it's probably the most important and the easiest to kind of understand, get a grasp of, and start using right away. So I've set up a project here where we're going to heavily violate the single responsibility principle and then I'm going to show you how we can kind of clean things up and make it follow this principle. So the principle says that every class or module should be responsible for a single piece of your software or your game's functionality. In our case this is also going to apply to a component, so a component should be responsible for a single piece of functionality, not do a whole bunch of things. So to start we have a spaceship here, now let me delete that projectile, we have a spaceship here and the ship has just a ship full script on it and you can see we've got a decent number of fields here for speed a projectile one, a weapon mount, some thrust, some particle stuff. I'm gonna hit play to show you what it looks like. We can fly around using a WASD and click to shoot some projectiles. And we get some little thrusters that appear and go backwards and forwards. Uh, pretty simple stuff, but let's pull open the code and see what it looks like. So this is the ship full script. And you can see here my big chunk of serialized fields. These are all the fields that are showing up in the editor. They're private and marked with serialized just so they show up in the editor and stay at least a little bit encapsulated here. And um, I wanna scroll down. We have one other field for health. This just keeps track of the current health. You can see in awake we set the current health to the max. This just to, to kind of initialize the health out when we start the game. Then in our update, we check to see if fire one was pressed. If it was, we fire the weapon. Then we go through and check to see the horizontal and vertical axes values. This is just pulling in WASD or like the controller sticks, thumbsticks here on the Xbox controller. Um, and then we move the ship, we rotate the ship, and then we modify whether or not the particles are active. So let's keep going down. In fire weapon, we spawn a projectile. We add some force in the forward times that fire force variable that was up top. Then we check for collisions to see if we got hit by something else. Right now we're not gonna get hit by anything, but in a real game, you know, we're gonna have other ships firing back. And the, if a projectile hits us, we'll take damage. Then we reduce our health. If our health gets below zero or equal to zero, we die. Then we spawn a death particle and then we destroy the ship. So this is kind of everything for the ship, all kind of crammed into one class. And while this might work and it might seem like, okay, it's okay, it's less than 100 lines of code, uh, it's not very maintainable. So imagine I want to add another weapon. All right now suddenly I have to come back into here, change this fire weapon thing, maybe add a second mount point, maybe have mount point two or an array of mount points. Um, and then maybe I want to fire two different types of weapons. Maybe I want this thing to be able to fire a missile when you hit B instead of the projectile when you hit A. Then I've got to go in and create a missile mount point. I have to create another projectile field. And I think you can imagine like this could just start growing and growing. You're going to end up with, you know, 100 lines of inspector fields just as I keep customizing this. And then one ship might not use missiles, but we still have a missile field in here. One ship might not use projectiles. One ship might need totally different particle systems or have a different input system. And every time we want to change things or add things, we're going to be bloating this class, adding if statements and switch statements to handle all the different ways that we want it to interact. So how can we do this a little bit cleaner and follow that single responsibility principle? Well, let's open up the other scene that I have here where we have this demo SRP. And here we've got a spaceship but you can see I actually have a couple different components now. So instead of a ship full that had all of the things, we have a separate script for the engine, we have a separate script for the input, for the health, for the particles, and for the launcher of the projectiles. And I wanna dive into this, but before we look at the code, I kinda of wanna bring to light that, or bring to light that uh, you can really customize things this way. So with it all split out like this, you know, I can still fly around, shoot, and everything but if I want to add another projectile launcher I can just uh, copy this component paste the new one in here and then add in uh, another maybe another fire point under here so let's take a look at this the fire point is actually just a transform so I want to make it actually shoot one out of each gun I'll duplicate that put this one right here make the second one shoot out of that fire point hit play and now I can shoot two weapons I didn't have to change my code at all, right? I just made a, 
a minor modification. And in, in a bigger project, in fact, in a project I have somewhat similar to this, I actually make these into just children of the spaceship, so then I can just kind of duplicate out that component or the child multiple times, not have duplicates of the component. Essentially be like where this fire point is, would have the script on it. So let's take a quick look and see how this all kind of ties together. The first thing I want to show is just ship input. So in a normal game, you're probably going to have multiple input systems. You might not, but you know if you're thinking like an Xbox game or a console game or something that just allows keyboard and you know joystick inputs, you may have different control schemes for this. And going into that ship and changing it every time or adding different statements for you know, like if they hit fire one or their player two and they hit fire two, you get a lot more confusing than this nice kind of simple little ship input script. So here you can see we have a horizontal and a vertical axis and a fire weapons field. We don't actually use the fire weapons field as public. It could probably just be private here. In fact, it could actually just kind of disappear. Um, and then we have an action that's an event for on fire. So this is going to let, let all of our weapons just listen in for the on fire method or the on fire event, sorry. And in update, we've set horizontal and vertical, just kind of like we were doing before. And then we set fire weapons to true if they press fire this frame, otherwise it's gonna be false. And then if fire weapons is true, we just invoke that action. So let's see what listens for that action. Here, I'm actually gonna expand this part out too. Oh, well here, let's just go right into it. So the projectile launcher. So this is the script that I just duplicated to add in a second weapon. And you can see here we've got a uh, field for the projectile. This should probably just be named projectile prefab as well. Just rename that while we're in here. And then we have the weapon mount point. You saw those in there and a fire force. And again, with this, we could also just modify the fire force and have a slow weapon and a fast weapon on the same ship without changing the code at all. Now in Awake, we get the ship input component and we just register for the on fire event, call handle fire, where we do exactly the same thing we were doing before, spawn a projectile and add some force. What else do we have? Well, our ship engine system, this is going to listen to our ship input kind of by um, polling. So this, uh, this one's not event driven like all the other ones really. It just kind of reads the ship inputs vertical and horizontal values and then we apply them right here so we add position based off the vertical or we, I guess move forward and then we rotate based off the horizontal exactly what we were doing in the first one but we also kind of check the state of the last thrust value and if it's changed we invoke this thrust changed event and the thrust changed event I think you might already guess is used by our ship particles so our ship particles component has thruster particles and a death system, death particle system prefab. Now when the thrust is changed, we call handle thrust changed, and we just set it to active based on whether or not the thrust value is greater than one or zero. Now another thing we could do here, since it's kind of clean and split up, we could also make this particle system scale up the number of particles slowly so it doesn't you know, immediately flip on. We could set that particle count and have it kind of grow right in here and have it in a nice clean separate place where we're again not modifying some big monolithic ship script and then we could also have totally different versions of the ship particle script that do different things you know maybe we have another ship that does different kinds of particles you know has particles when it's not active has particles when it is active that are different you know whatever we want to do we can modify it all in this nice small little place and then in the uh let's see on the death we handle ship death just by spawning a particle. So let's go into ship health. And ship health, again, very similar to the others. In awake, we again cache the health, or we set the health to the max health. And we listen for on collision enters. We take damage, reduce our health, and then we die. And then we send that on die event so that any particle system that's listening can play the particle. Now, if we don't have a particle system, not a problem. We just don't get an error. You know, nothing happens, the event is actually kind of the delegate right here is just empty so it just does nothing we could also just add a null check on here and do an invoke but um without dot net four six it, it looks a little ugly so i just prefer this method so again the the big point here is that we can customize our ship behavior completely without going in and modifying a big monolithic script we can have separate types of ship health 
we can have a ship health that's just totally invulnerable. In fact, to make it invulnerable, we could just create a ship without this ship health script on it, then it wouldn't take damage, it would never die. We'd have to make a minor change to our ship particles and just make sure that uh, we actually have a ship health before we register this. No, nice easy check though, something like if that is not equal to null, and now we can support invulnerable ships. Uh, again, nice and simple. We don't have to add a checkbox. We don't have to modify our ship script again. We just don't add the component and suddenly it's invincible. So I hope this gives a good idea of the single responsibility principle. I also did a really long blog post uh, kind of going over some of the similar topics or the similar concepts, but using an NPC instead of a spaceship. So I'd check that out. I'll put a link in the description below and you know, it's got all the source code. You can go through it and I think it'll kind of reinforce what we're doing here. But just remember the, the key thing is keep your components and your scripts just managing one thing ideally. That also lets you keep them nice and small. If you start to see your script getting over one or 200 lines, it's probably doing multiple things and there's probably some good room for refactoring to just split that out into smaller little components. And again, they don't all have to be mono behavior game object components. They can just be normal classes. Um, some of these might even be able to be swapped out and just become normal classes. The only reason that they're mono behaviors at all is for the, um, the serialized fields for these different settings. So hope you liked the video. If you do, please uh, share. Share it with your friends, uh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks for watching.